I am Ezekiel Bone. On this enchanted evening, I am your host, a ghost, your guide on a trip to a twilight world where the past spills over into the present. I've been around this town for hundreds of years, so lend me your ears, lend me your minds. As we weave our way around my macabre memory lane, dark tales of the hood will come alive all around you as you bear witness to the guts and gore of old Nottingham Town. Ezekiel Bone was a figment of my imagination um, in the late 80s. What a great name. I've got to find a use for him. I did a lot of work at festivals, Glastonbury Festival, producing shows for them, freak shows, that sort of stuff. I worked with Kiss My Axe doing this Mad Max type show. And they were crazy times. But at the end of the day, you can only do that sort of thing for a certain level of time. I'm an artist and I'm using the city and the forest as, um, as my um, canvas and what I do my art and my art turns to be, happens to be live interpretation and acting and that sort of stuff. I've always been particularly interested in history but of course I'm using the idea of a ghost as a hook to draw people into history. Into his last few breaths. <laughs> in sobbing gasps as a hangman just with a noose around his neck. It just seemed to me that Ezekiel Bone was the right character to lead this but make Ezekiel a ghost therefore that gives me the artistic license of making him uh, be able to um, step in between different times. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. The county jail, a place of retribution, a place of incarceration, a place of execution. You know, it took me four months to research it, it took me uh, another four months to write it into stories and of course it's taken me about two, two and a half years to learn it all and to get to the level it's at at the moment. But it's doing good service to Nottingham Town, you know, because um, even local people uh, and tourists alike, they both spend time in the lace market and I'm using that as a theatrical backdrop for these wonderful stories. And of course, um, people are amazed how beautiful the lace market is. And uh, they've never actually taken the time, even locals, to actually stop and look around themselves. So this has given them that opportunity. So the fact they're hearing history as well, it's, um, it's, a, uh, it's a brilliant sort of um, uh, match, isn't it, really? It really works. At three minutes past eight, when the chaplain uttered the words, in the midst of life, we are in death. The hammer drew the bolt, and Richard Parker went through the chapel to meet his maker. A massive shudder ran through the crowd as people fought to see his dance of death as he jerked around on the end of rope with pathetic, convulsive quivers. Every contortion of his limbs was hailed with a cheer. You ladies, you have loved it, especially as his neck didn't snap, so he struggled for a very long time. You should have seen his face. It turned purple, it became engorged with blood. His eyeballs popped in their sockets, his tongue stuck out of his twisted mouth. <laughs> The history is a fascinating subject and a lot of people, the older they get, you know, in their you know, middle age, twilight years, they really get into history. Um, but it's not taught properly in schools, is it? And the problem is that it's usually too dry and academic and it's too um, a case of learning dates and names, which is pretty boring. And history needs to be brought to life and that's what I'm doing. So, of course, I'm using... Um, obvious hooks like the ghost idea and the sort of the guts and gore because everybody's fascinated by guts and gore aren't they jack the ripper and the elephant man and the weird side the darker side of human nature people love that so people go away um, having that sort of darker side of them satisfied by the guts and gore but also they don't realize that they've been roundly educated as well about as to the history of this you know amazing town and that is the way history should be taught the eyes of the world are upon you at Glastonbury Festival when you're doing there because it is the biggest festival in the world. So it's a good platform to move on to other things. But unfortunately the projects I was working on didn't work out that way. So I ended up getting into loads of debt. That's why I had to get a proper job. Um, and I was just so lucky that this job cropped up in the paper. And of course I applied for it and got it. And it was the first proper job that I'd ever had. Um, and to be honest with you, it's all my experience uh, producing stuff and researching stuff and the entertainment world, that's what got me the job in Sherwood Forest. And now I'm taking those skills that I've picked up along the way into the forest and finding more colourful, amusing, entertaining ways of drawing people in beyond the normal staid average ways, as it were, you know, which have all been done before and they're getting a bit tired and boring and I'm looking for new ways to sort of... Uh, entertain people and educate them and excite them about the, the forest really because it is a uh, national treasure and it is a natural wonder on our doorstep you know and it is one of the finest her um, heritage forests in the world 
as a general, Nottingham's been good to me, so I'm being good to uh, Nottingham and Nottinghamshire by you know, working as an artist and flying the flag of Nottinghamshire. I'm uh, Aid Andrews and I'm the Heritage Ranger for the Sherwood Forest Trust, which is the charity for Sherwood Forest. I've lived all over England and it's um, and Scotland as well and um, I've lived in London and Manchester, Chester, some beautiful cities but Nottingham really is uh, the centre of the world to me, it's the centre of England uh, and, and of course Robin Hood was from here, you know one of the world's um, most famous forests was here as well, you know Sherwood Forest and of course um, but putting Robin Hood aside there's so much other wonderful history here like you've got the Dukeries as well, you've got the park area down here where Sherwood Forest used to come to and that's now one of the, uh, the finest examples of um, Georgian, Victorian and Edwardian housing in the country. Uh, we've got a wonderful theatre here, there's just so much history and culture here it's, um, it's a remarkable place. Uh, what I do as a heritage ranger, I am the heritage ranger for Sherwood Forest which means I get uh, local people uh, doing um, heritage projects which celebrate their particular area of Sherwood Forest. So there's very much a different, uh, this is the human angle of Sherwood Forest. I get people involved in the history and uh, the glorious heritage of Sherwood Forest and that might take different forms. It might be a, um, a, a walk around the village which they've uh, researched and uh, written into a heritage trail or it might be um, um, a girls' uh, drama group, they, did a, uh, they live in Blidworth, they did their project on the uh, Robin Hood legends associated with their um, village of uh, Blid Blidworth. And of course when they're studying their particular area, uh, they're honing in on specific things but they're also getting the bigger picture, aren't they? And of course, most importantly, it's all about their um, place in the forest and what their interaction with the forest and how important it is to us and what they can do for its future. I find it particularly interesting because the human angle. So of course Sherwood Forest, um, that's where Robin Hood was born. It's the birthplace of the legend and that's why it's famous throughout the world. It's the birthplace of Robin Hood. Uh, now this is a f there's always been support for Robin Hood in this neck of the woods, hasn't there? Uh, and across England because he's, 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 a, um, he's a source of uh, English pride, isn't he? You go anywhere in the world and Robin Hood, yeah, they've heard of him. Um, I see myself as a modern day Robin Hood only in so much that I want to be free. I want to have the right to do what I want to do and do it when I do it. If I can make a living from doing that, i.e. storytelling, performance and so forth, which is educational and enlightening and flies the flag of Nottinghamshire, then I think that's a fair deal. Well, of course, the, uh, the modern day with the uh, advent of the uh, computer age and the decline of the uh, state ministries means that, um, of course, everyone's uh, lost all these um, hands-on jobs, haven't they? And the sort of the structure of society has really started breaking down, really. So to work in an office uh, five days a week, um, eight hours a day, to my mind, would be unbearable, would be like a life sentence. Now, of course, I've got to spend a bit of time in my office because it's an inescapable fact of uh, life in today's society. But, of course, I'm planning uh, activities and events and uh, entertainment out in the forest in the city. So um, I managed to get away without doing it uh, full time. Thank God. Uh, but, of course, that is a price of progress, isn't it? And what I'm doing here is um, trying to take people out of their little boxes in these offices and uh, get them onto the streets of Nottingham. So what we're talking about here is... Uh, cultural regeneration, getting people aware of the history and tuned into it, plugged into it and just proud of their history because at the end of the day this is a magnificent city and um, well it is a magnificent city. Um, what comes after that? <laughs>